Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm calling uh, the meeting of the Finance Committee uh, together at 2.04 p.m. Um, pursuant to a number of different acts of, this, of the state legislature, um, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Mm -hmm. uh, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and we will not allow any in-person attendance of the members. Uh, attendance of the members of the public, uh, but uh, every effort will be in, is made to ensure that the public can, act, can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological meetings. Um, so confirm, I will just want to go around the room and confirm uh, the members of the, uh, um, the uh, committee can be heard and seen. Uh, Andy? Yes. Uh, Councillor Haneke? Present. Kathy? Yep, I'm here. Bernie? Present. And uh, Matt is not going to be here, and Alicia is not present at, at this time. Let me just check the audience, see if she's in the audience. Nope. Okay, so um, we have a pretty short agenda today, so hopefully... Um, we're just going to go over some things we've we've gone over before. Um, I want to uh, approve the minutes. I, I don't, we only have the minutes of the February sixth meeting, so we can't approve. We don't have minutes of the twentieth meeting yet. Um, then we want to. Uh, I'll call for public comment. Um, then we'll go through the uh, Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee recession and replacement. Uh, of the debt authorization for the high school track and field, and then the draft uh, surplus property disposition, and then uh, some new topics that uh, that uh, An Andy has uh, requested uh, he talk about. So, has, has everyone anyone had a has everyone had a chance to take a look at the meetings of February sixth? I did. Okay. And I I thought they looked fine. Yeah, the I just caught one typo on page two. It's um, the third paragraph, full paragraph. Uh, in the first sentence, it says or or tow a sentence or tow, which it should be T W T W O, not T O W. Other than that, uh, I didn't have any issue. So, can we? Uh, yeah, I found two others, and I'm trying to see if I can find where I have the document. Uh, there were two other typographical type things. They weren't significant, uh, but there were enough that I at least noted them here. I, I have it now. Um, so I just to let you know what they are. Uh, one was the one that you had the, the toad. Um, then see if I can. Oops, I'm having problems with my computer. That's why it's uh, so slow to do what should be very quick. Oh, and the um, under item number four, the draft surplus property disposition policy, third paragraph, the sentence uh, with, that goes in part, Shane suggests that a committee review to review the building oh. and land. Right. So it should just be to knock out the to review. So it reads that a committee review the. So that was uh, one of the two. And um, see if I can find if there was a third. No, I think that was it. So I'm sorry, there was only those two. Okay. So um, is there a motion to prove those with the uh, corrections, the typographic corrections? So moved, Shane. Okay. Second, Haneke. Okay, uh, let's uh, go around. I'm just going to go by what the screen <laughs> says. Uh, Andy? Yes. 
Uh, I'm a yes. Uh, Councillor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? I uh, concur. All right. So we're we've approved those meetings. Notes. Uh, Athena, do you want me to uh, meet with you, or have you did you catch those corrections? I can make those changes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Great. Okay. So uh, next on the agenda is public comment. Um, if there's anyone in the public that wishes to make a comment, uh, now's the time. Please raise your hand and we'll get you um, in to give a comment. Um, the time limit for, limit for comments is three minutes um, and um, the comments must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. Um, but the, the, they don't have to be focused on the today's agenda. Um, I don't see anyone, any hands raised. So I think we can close public comments. Uh, moving on to the uh, Regional School Commission rescission and replacement. So we looked at this a couple of meetings ago um, and uh, Hopefully people have had a chance to think about this. Uh, are there any further comments or questions about, we gave Doug some questions and he uh, answered a lot of the questions the last time we, we talked. So if there's any further comment or questions, uh, please uh, let me know, Kathy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to indicate um, that I would like to make a motion that we have the council approved this. So I know we had three options, one which was just let it sit for a while and there's a pocket approval. Um, there's a turn it down or make, I think it would be good to take a positive action. I, I like the way it's worded and I know uh, Mandy, Council Haneke raised concerns. It's worded with a lot of flexibility, but it makes it clear that the 1.5 at a minimum is gonna do the track and I, I, I think we need to allow that flexibility because the looking at the price as the cost estimates from three or four years ago, which haven't been updated today. So even if we did simple 4% a year, we're going to be lucky. We're going to be squeaked by if we get the extra council money the, from free cash and the CPA money. We're going to be lucky to be able to do an enlarged track with a field with or without rotation. The rotation was interesting um, in the original cost estimates because I had thought that that added a lot, but it only, once you've gone to a five lane track and put an enlarged field in it, which was 1B, the difference between that and two was only a couple, I shouldn't say only a couple hundred thousand, but it wasn't another million, you know, so. <laughs> So it was in it were in the ballpark with the Amherst two supplementals and if a few other towns also do their CPA of uh, doing more than just a track. But I think it's important to have this on the table to allow at least the track to proceed if when it comes to November, we're uh, waving our hands because I think we otherwise delayed this too much. So, so that was my comment on it. I mean, I don't have anything specific more. I did think that in our report, um, we can talk about this secondly, that the wording that the school will have to go back to CPA to go broader than option three because of their, it wasn't the way the financial order was written, but the, the, the paragraph that preceded it, that anchored it in three. Um, and that was protective when CPA voted on it. They didn't want their money to go just to the track. So they had to anchor in, 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 in a larger project. And the one that was being proposed was three. When the council voted the extra money out of the free cash allocation, we did option two or three, where it's possible we might end up doing 1B. So if two, three is flexible enough to allow us to go down to 1B, if not, we're going to have to have the school ask us to change that. But I'm my understanding from Doug is we didn't need to do that now, um, that they 
you know, when we're further along. So if they come back to us with option two, it's worded perfectly all right. Um, so, so that was my first thought was to positively report this out with a recommended approve. And the second was to talk about these two other pieces on I'll stop. Kathy, is that a motion to recommend the council approve the debt authorization? Uh, yes. So I didn't, um, Athena, I didn't know whether we want, that is my motion. So what I didn't know whether we first wanted to have a discussion and then a motion, I'm glad to put, I'm happy to put the motion on the table. So I would, I would, I'll make a motion that we recommend to the council that we approve um, the proposed, uh, what do we call it? Rescission and replacement right. as, as presented to us. Um, that's my motion. And I'll second that motion so we can have it for discussion after we uh, finish the questions we have. Okay, uh, Councilor Haneke? Yeah, I, I have a clarification question for the superintendent, um, acting superintendent. Um, and then obviously I'm gonna have some comments on the motion, but I'd like to get my questions clarified first. Um, Uh, there was a chart provided last meeting regarding the funding already, quote, authorized or pledged. And then there was an asterisk to that chart that said an additional 240, 620,000 in CPA funds may be available from Pelham, Shrewsbury, and Leverett, but only for grass options. And we were asking for a lot of clarification as to timing of needing in the financial order essentially all of the funding and the timing of the intended contracting and all. And I just want to clarify a couple of things. It was my understanding last meeting that the superintendent indicated that the contracts wanted to be out for bid by like no December or January, December 2024, January 2025, and then signed um, that the CPA that there are no outstanding requests to Pelham, Shutesbury, and Leverett for CPA money, um, but that in order to fully sign a contract, all funding would need to already be authorized. Um, therefore, it's my understanding that this potential $240,620 that is in this document that said, well, it might be there is actually not at all available for this project based on the time frame that the superintendent gave us last week because the contracts for bids and projects and the decision to go forward knowing that there's money available would have to be done before any application to CPA next spring to those towns could be made. And so I, I just want to make sure that my understanding of that is correct, that there's this alloc Alla, you know, this this comment that this money may be available, but in actuality, it's not at all available, even if the application goes out, because the contract would already be signed and the funding already has to be authorized before that contract is signed. And this funding cannot be authorized before that contract is signed. Is my understanding of this timeline correct? Ed, uh, is it fine if I answer that? Um, simple answer is yes. The more complicated answer is if if the four communities might consider an off cycle appropriation, which would require them to call a town meeting for the fall. But you know, barring that, which is a pretty big ask for one CPA item, um, you're correct. Thank you for that clarification, Kathy. Um, Doug, I just I was going to actually say the same thing that you just said, that it's possible they could act. And the only way it would be impossible for them to act is if they've already voted to allocate 100% of the money they have for the fiscal year. Um, so that was, it's just an additional question on Mandy's. Um, they may or may not have done that depending on the cycle of their town meeting. They may have a package coming that could still be amended. So my second part question on the CPAs that aren't Amherst. Um, 
if so we're we're talking about FY you know we the Amherst approval was an open ended to end at some point if the schools don't use the money <laughs> you know it wasn't a used by the state or forever hold your peace um but if the contract is going out and they're in the next year cycle the three towns and their intention if they met early in the fall talking about FY, the next FY, the construction, there's the design phase and then the construction phase. Would they be too late to put the money in? What is, it's just, it's a timing question. So Mandy's was, if they don't act in the spring or summer of this year, but mine is if they act when the next round of CPA is right away, um, knowing that, um, you know, and, and I'm thinking, I know my framework is an elementary school building project, which is not the same as what we have here, but certain parts of it aren't all happening at the same time. You know, so money coming in and including the way we bond finance it, we don't necessarily, we do can do an initial package and then a bigger package. So it's just, is that feasible or is if two, is 240, if not acted on the spring or summer, not real? So we should we just delete it as a possible source you and it's we meaning the town but also the regional school committee yeah i think it's it's a it's a difficult um i think it's it's a, an extraordinarily difficult uh likelihood that that would be available i think the only way we, it could would be if we did some sort of stage construction where we had a second piece that was dependent upon cpa funding but i think that that's going to be hard to figure at this point, you know, if, and, and, you know, I don't know what we'd have that would be eligible. So the other thing I think about is, oh, well, maybe we do bleachers as a second phase and we'll ask the towns for that chunk to do bleachers. It, but I don't know if that's an eligible expense for CPA for one thing. I doubt if it is. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's best to consider that 240 not available. Um, you know, and obviously if, if, if uh, there's a, you know, an, an energy or a, um, uh activity in the in those three towns to take up cpa off cycle say at a fall town meeting then then it becomes more possible but but i think we're going to have some de decision points around uh direction to our our designers that are going to dictate us making decisions without that money available okay that an that answers it thank you councillor haneke so i don't have any other questions i'm going to put out my initial thoughts on the motion that's on the floor, which is that I will oppose it. Um, and that's with a heavy heart, because I really do believe that our schools need a new rotated track that is eight lanes large. But I, at this point, do not believe I can recommend the council pass a borrowing when we don't have updated cost figures to even know that that borrowing would cover a non-rotated, non-expanded track. I don't believe we should recommend approving a borrowing when there are too many options on the table um, that have funding plans that are unrealistic given that we've been told that 240 won't be there, but the school committee thinks it will be and all of that. I don't, you know, I, I don't believe we should recommend a borrowing when the original plan for cost sharing is still the plan, yet we've just heard from the superintendent that that is not a, 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 cost sharing plan we should rely on. I'm not comfortable approving a borrowing or recommending approving a borrowing um, in these instances. And I guess it's with a heavy heart that I would vote against this with a strong, strong recommendation to, if this does not pass, back to the regional school committee that says, Revolt the borrowing when you've got updated costs. I think it's it's irresponsible to approve borrowing without an actual estimate that's not three years old. 
Kathy? Um, uh, given what Mandy just said, I'm going to come back stronger. Um, I, I was at the town council meeting when the 1.5 first came to us, and Councillor Haneke only wanted um, option three and didn't want to vote just the 1.5 because we might just get a track. I've always been okay if we just got a track. I think, I think, not having a track is is uh, something that we shouldn't live with. With the track is totally unusable. So from what I can see, is the track is feasible. Um, and yes, we don't have a cost estimate. We didn't really have a cost estimate last time, but but the track number looked looked feasible. So I don't want to take this off the books um, for a whole bunch of reasons. It's on the books in the town with the regional capital allocation out of JCPC coming, and it's on the book for the schools. If we remove it, it may quickly be replaced with other capital needs, and then the chance of the track goes out the window. So I think it's important that that we move this forward and so I, I'm not just a yes, but I'm a strong yes recommending moving it forward. Um, last time we almost had some no's because people wanted to challenge the it was only linked to option three and wanted to have the flexibility of grass. Um, and so there were some potential no's and people said, but we need the track. And so even the no's went for the old wording. Um, but this time, we don't have to make that decision right now, which is great. So I, I think the wording, because it's flexible um, and um, w without this authorization, Doug's going to have a hard time getting a, getting somebody to come up with cost estimates for us. So it is this, it's sitting with, there's some earnest money behind all of this that we want to do this. Um, that he's got, he's using, I believe you're using that early allocation of C, CPAC money from the town to get a new design for us, right, Doug? So, um, and there are a few bells and whistles. They're not big bells and whistles, uh, like lights. Um, I don't want to give up on irrigation. So there might be some things that, um, uh, that can be taken out and still given us, give us a really good track. So I just... I, I don't want to do no. So I'm a strong yes, and I will stop talking. Andy? I'll add one additional piece, and then I uh, want to move on to other people. The additional piece is that uh, we have to also understand that the other three members of the region are towns that uh, have to um, town meetings is the only time that they can react to borrowing requests and uh, that uh, well there's always the option that a select board can call a special town meeting they don't like to do that and for I think that for obvious reasons and that would uh, the, the goal of uh, the schools for good reasons has been to try and make requests at this time of year so that um, if the select board makes that decision to take, to put it on the warrant that it comes at the annual town meeting, which is scheduled with certainty and with uh, uh, as good an attendance as they're going to receive. So I think that we're uh, placing a big burden on the process and chancing a significant delay that could actually increase costs um, and uh, just urge that everybody consider that as one factor as we go forward. Ernie? Yeah, um, I'd just like to make the point that there, there's no good reason why the other three communities can't pull appropriations from CPA and get them through town meeting. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to do that. The only reason being they wouldn't be able to do that is that they had no money left in CPA. But we, we, we know that we're all independent, um, free thinking, freestanding, free people, people's republics here. And uh, 351 of them in Massachusetts. And God forbid that we should like, pull together and fix things. Um, that would be really unusual. 
Uh, like uh, Councilor Haneke, I would uh, appreciate having uh, precise, more precise plans and estimates, but that ain't gonna happen uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, I think it's unfortunate that um, once again, we have a, uh, with the school committee, we, the prospect of, of uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the good being overcome by the perfect. Um, we had a plan, we had funding, we could have been started, uh, but no, uh, I want to joke that uh, if we can't play on artificial turf, we should play only under uh, natural light and rainfall to water the thing. Um, all my sarcasm aside, I'm going to, I'm going to concur and in, in, I'm going to support this. I think that uh, the superintendent needs, uh, needs to be able to move forward. Um, I have a great deal of trust in uh, in the school administration to to come up with uh, uh, a plan on this, and we do have a construction estimate. It's one point five million. So the question is, how much can we get for that one point five million? And, and I will step off my soapbox now. Thank you. Thanks, Bernie. Uh, Councilor Haneke. A couple of additional things and some responses. That construction estimate was three years ago without, it's not even been inflated up to today's dollars, let alone construction for next year's dollars. I can't trust that the one and a half million would even build 1A. Um, and that's part of my concern for authoring, authorizing one and a half million is because it's not even, we don't even have numbers that it would be enough for 1A. And, and Kathy is correct, I don't want 1A. And one of the reasons I don't want 1A is this town, Amherst, paid for a downtown fields master plan plan. And 1A would throw that plan out the window. And I think it's irresponsible of us to pay for a plan, support a plan. We've got CPA money in front of us right now that would execute, that is asking to execute a portion of that plan and yet here we are saying we might recommend a project that would throw that plan out the window. I don't think that's responsible. Um, and as far as Andy's point on town meetings, this regional school committee voted this borrowing that needs acted upon in 60 days in January when there were no town meetings scheduled and there are none scheduled right now. And so they are the ones that took it out of cycle, not us. And if we send a strong statement to the regional school committee by not recommending this and saying, put this back on cycle, they have until March 18th or 20th or whenever it is um, to revote another borrowing authorization that would put it on cycle so that all of the town meetings could weigh in on it without calling a special town meeting. Yet the regional school committee chose not to do that to basically say, we want this pocket approved. And I don't think that's the right way to operate. And we could send, and if we delayed this and not recommended it now, and told the regional school committee to bring another one back within the typical cycle, like immediately, we would have those updated numbers to know if one and a half million is there. The superintendent two weeks ago told us they'd have it in about two to three months. That would likely be within the 60 days if they voted a new authorization to send back to us with a 60 day timeline. Then we might have more information. I'm just extremely uncomfortable approving a borrowing when we have so little authorization. I feel like we would never recommend this if the town manager came to us and said, I want $2 million, but I'm not gonna give you updated cost estimates. I'm not gonna inflate those estimates. And I'm not gonna tell you which of three different plans you're going to get. You just give me the money and then I'll do it all three months from now. I don't think we'd ever recommend that. And I'm not sure why we wouldn't hold the school committee to the same standard. Thank you, Kathy. Um, 
you know, we're such a small group, I hate to call a question, but I think we may be ready to a vote, but Bob, you're the only one who hasn't weighed in on this. So um, I, I here we have one strong no, and we can write the reasons why. And I've already indicated my reasons, yes. I, I have to I have to say that, you know, going back to when this first came up, when I was on the finance committee, um, I was very skeptical because for the same reasons that, that Councillor Haneke said, I mean, we don't really have the funding in place to do maybe even the simplest um, replacement of the current uh, track. Um, and yet we've got this grand, you know, grand plan to fix everything and change everything and no funding for it. Um, and I was concerned that we would be in this position um, when we first when we first discussed this, that we would find out that we you know we 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 go down a path and then we we want you know option three, but we can only afford option one a. Uh, so what do we do? Well, I don't know. Um, so uh, on the other hand, I I do hear what Kathy and Andy said in that if we don't do this, we could you know this one point five million that's already there could go away. Um, it could get put somewhere else. Uh, so we have that risk as well. Um, so I, I'm, I'm torn to be honest with you. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the right way to go is on this, to be honest with you. Um, any other thoughts? Well, my suggestion would be to vote on the motion and, and in the report, make sure we capture the concerns however the vote turns out um mm -hmm. we don't we we don't have to vote a majority we can we can be split um so you know so that that's my view um you know and uh, i see andy's up so i was just seeing whether we could move to a vote yeah you're up andy andy yeah i mean we're gonna have to get to a vote at some point but uh i just want to acknowledge that uh uh, Mandy's uh, correct that uh, if something came back uh, in March or even very beginning of April from the school committee, it would at least uh, reach uh, each uh, select board prior to its establishing a final warrant for its town meeting uh, so that there could still be done at an annual town meeting. However, I don't see it as likely that there will be more cost information available to really update it. Um, it would be only if there was uh, uh, a rewording that provided for some additional caveats or provisions to go into the uh, revised vote. And I think we would owe it to the school committee at least to make our suggestions of what they might be. So, uh, you know, I think it is a tough vote, and um, I want to hear the rest of the discussion, um, and then I'll have to make up my mind, as we all will, if it ends up being a tie vote, then the motion will fail. Bernie? Yeah, just to dispose of the notion that the other three towns have only the annual town meeting uh, or the annual town budget to vote this money. They don't. I mean, I, you, you can have a special before the annual. You, it's all different kinds of things you can do with that. I know we, because I've done them. And it's, again, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not impractical. It may be a little more difficult. I may have to do a little extra work, but that's part and parcel of, uh, of local government. I would like, I believe me, I share the concerns that, folks have, have, have raised here about there being no solid plan. And um, <clears throat> I, I mean, my point, I think to be brutally frank, I doubt that the school committee can act in time. Um, you know, I, 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 have, no, I have no faith uh, that uh, uh, this, will, this will happen. What I'm trying to do, what I'd like to do is give the superintendent some room to move here and to move this forward. 
and if it fails, you know, because we can't get the extra, the, the extra money doesn't show up or, or any kind of new preliminary design comes in un, with unnecessarily high or, or undesirable, then that's what happens. And I do share that fear that if this $1.5 million goes somewhere else, it'll get there. There's always more demand than there's supply. Uh, the money will get used up on, on, on other things. And then in a year or two, I won't be on the finance committee, but in a year or two, people will be coming back and saying, hmm, oh, well, we need $3 million for this track. So, so I'd like to have this move forward. I'd like to kind of break this log jam a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, we'll, you know, uh, we'll see. I'm not going to try to be cavalier about uh, the support for the for the motion. I think there's all kinds of, of, of risk here and all kinds of challenges. But I want to give the superintendent the opportunity to add some room to move and maneuver. OK. Anybody else have anything? OK, so we have a motion and a second. Um, I think guess I'll call a vote on this. Uh, I'll go first, and I, I'm going to reluctantly vote yes uh, because I do I agree with the sentiment that we want to keep this thing moving, and to delay will only wind up costing us money. And I don't think we're we're committing you know anything until we get a final plan. So uh, I would vote yes. Yes. So, uh, Councilor Haneke. No. Okay, Kathy? Yes. Andy? I think for, for uh, reasons as Bob has stated, I'm going to vote yes. And Bernie? Support the motion. Okay, Alicia's, I think, still absent. Let me <clears throat> check. Yeah, she's. Yep. So we have my count was three yes, one no, one support, one support absent, and one counselor absent. That's so correct. Okay, so the motion does pass, um, but I do think that, you know, um, Athena, we will, we when we put a report together, we should definitely make sure that we put the richness of the concerns um, that have been expressed uh, today. I think they're valid concerns. Okay. Um, so now the next item is the surplus property. Should, uh, we, should we thank J Doug? And oh, yes, him... Doug, and thanks for being here. Thanks, and, Doug. Uh, yeah, you don't thank, need to. Thank you all. I appreciate the conversation of, and and uh, it's helpful context for me. So as we as we kind of move ahead here in the in the short term with with design and new data, I'll make sure to convey that to you all so you have that information. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Okay, so moving on, we have the surplus property policy. Uh, this has been updated. Uh, by uh, Dave and Athena per our previous conversation. Um, I looked through it. I saw the, the first, the purpose is one sentence. It's way too long. <laughs> so I think we should put a, a comment in there in the middle of the last uh, set, the last line there. It says, let's be served by disposition of the property, comma, and to provide an opportunity for public input regarding disposition results, because it's one big long sentence. Um, um, so that that was the sort of the typo things I looked at, uh, and I saw. Does anyone have any comments or discussion on the final policy or on the draft, Kathy? Um, I agree with you, Bob. I also I don't like. It's a four line sentence. I, it's and it do, does have two thoughts in it. So to break it into the two thoughts, there that there's a, there's a outline and there's an opportunity. Um, I thought this was generally very responsive to our discussion. Um, and my question, and this is, it's not a question that requires a change in the way this is written, is number six. Um, on little tiny pieces of a piece of land, one small old house, if we have one of those, um, seems like a pretty doable thing. The, um, the analysis of alternative uses for the property, including public benefits and drawbacks, development potential, environmental impact, and financial impact for each alternative, seems to me 
to be a fairly major task if we're talking about a major piece of property. So during our discussion, um, and when reading the minutes, I wanted to make sure we had had this, it was behind the scenes if a big piece of property um, was being considered. There needs to be a lot of work to come to that conclusion. And there might need to be a committee set up with counselors, with, with other people on it to, to think that through. Otherwise, we sit and we hold a piece of property for a really, really long time because no one has time to think through the pieces. So that that's sort of the intention of this. Otherwise, I understand it is to get to the point where we declare it surplus. And I'm just saying that packed into six is a lot of work, um, um, which is not a bad thing. I just wanna be assured by the town manager or something that we would put in that work um, and my, Last time through, I actually prepared a memo and I'd like it to go in the finance committee records, Athena, since I spoke to it, that gave hot links to what another town had done, not to say we should do the same thing, but just to think about what, what a process might be like. So I, I had provided that um, and I can redo it to be less critical of the memo itself and more talking about this. So that it, that was the only thing I am I am and Elisa just wrote that she's not going to be able to make it today so she's not tardy she's absent um, so that's that's my only comment I thought um, I thought this was very responsive um, and uh, for, as I said for small pieces it works well um, for larger pieces to me it doesn't work as well because there should be a lot of work. Bernie, I, I think the uh, I think the policy is is well done. Um, it can go the way it is. Um, I, I'm no longer an ICMA member, but when I was, I would get all kinds of stuff from communities across the country who were doing some pretty innovative um, uh, aspects of, of public property reuse and and public uh, public private uh, planning and the like that sort of makes East Hampton stuff look pale. Um, so, uh, you know, I think what happens here is um, in paragraph six, is this really falls to the administrator or to the manager and his staff, uh, in this case, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to go into to the council and say, yeah, we're, we're going to look at reuse of wildwood. And uh, to do that, we want to bring in these experts and these planners and these people beyond what we have here and now. So, I, you know, I think it covers a lot of bases. Um, and, and I don't see the need to have any major further discussion about the policy. I think we should just vote it up and put it in place. Athena, did you have a comment? Yeah, I hope you can hear me okay. It's raining. Um, the... I, I spoke with uh, town manager and about this. I don't know if Paul's listening very hard right now, but um, if, that if if the if there were to be a larger property that came into the town's control, that it would be highly likely that the town um, manager would convene a reuse committee to look at all of those concerns that you raised, Kath, Kathy, before just sending it on to the council for a surplus. So I think that's. That would be the intention. It's just not written into this policy since it's outdated. Oh, has so I'll let him speak to that. Okay, Dave. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Bob. Um, first off, I want to give Athena uh, the lion's share of the credit for for reworking this policy. She really did amazing work on this in short order. So kudos to her. Um, yeah. Um, I, I've been listening to the conversation. I, I don't disagree. And, and I, I think I saw some earlier uh, writing from Kathy that generally, you know, uh, agreed with about larger pieces of property or more complex properties that may have, say, a school on them or, or other uh, town-owned building. 
but I, I miss, I think your last discussion on this, but I just do want to, you know, I'm staring at the purpose and I just want to remind the group that it's really when the town manager decides that disposition is the direction that he wants to, he or she future town managers want to, to go in that this policy would be enacted and, and moved on. So if there were a piece of property, and I can think of a couple right now that we are in control of, the town staff may go to Paul and say, Paul, we don't think this should be disposed of. We think there should be a, an analysis. And and number six, many of the, the elements of number six would probably be, would be uh, analyzed and pulled together in, in a report to support why town town staff think that a piece of property should not be surplus. It should be, there should be a committee formed or we should go in this direction and move it toward affordable housing or some other town municipal use. So all of all of points you've raised before, but just wanted to chime in on those. Thanks. Councilor Haneke. It's an interesting discussion on number six. It makes me rethink how much of number six we need once disposition is recommended and sale is recommended, but I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. I actually raised my hand for another spelling error or grammar error in number one. The com the first comma in the paragraph after the word it's is probably right. not appropriately there. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what I think of number six anymore. It's a lot to ask for. And from what David just said, I guess I'd, I'd ask if town staff said, we think it's okay to dispose of this, how much of number six would be done before that decision was made or, you know, versus doing that in deciding for reuse, you know, how, how much of number six is sort of done in making a decision to dispose versus reuse. You, Kathy? Um, Mandy, I think that's right, but I'm comfortable with it. You know, in other words, what, as what Dave said, if it's actually just, you know, dispose, it's an interesting word. Um, you know, in hospitals, people said maybe instead of discharge, we should call it a transition because discharge <laughs> implies <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs> and in fact, you need follow up care. So we're not really disposing of properties necessarily when it comes to bigger ones. We've, we're, we're, re, we're thinking the town doesn't have a use for it as it sits, but maybe we have a mixed use for it and it should be prone privately owned or something else. Um, but that would be when it's surplus. Um, if we decided to keep a really long-term lease and just get someone to build on our land, I guess the answer is then we don't ever declare it surplus. Um, but apparently some of the housing that we've built on town land can be taxed, you know, so part of mine is that, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable that for a larger property, if it actually was being proposed for disposal, there should have been a fair amount of analysis done before reaching that decision. Um, and you might, in fact, on uh, number 10, the recommended action, um, well, the 10, nine and 10, we're out of that analysis, some restrictions that might be placed on the property. You know, we, we want to keep some piece of it, or we want X, Y, or Z, and a recommended minimum to be paid for it. That's part of six, um, you know, what restrictions you would put on it. So I think this is quite well done. Um, and I just, Bob, again, it's our report, and I can write a paragraph if you need for the report. Mm -hmm. I just want to capture that behind the scenes, you know, what town manager just attested to, we capture that in our report to the full council, you know, that in event it was a large property, highly likely that the town manager would convene a reuse committee, you know, just to get that wording in. Because Dave, the concern is that the staff make all the decisions and suddenly the property is housing or the property is 
name something else. Um, you know, or we sit on way back when, when we bought Hickory Ridge, I understand why we've sat on the developable land there because we keep talking about potential alternative uses of it and we've never gravitated, but we, we just sit on it. Um, so we're not disposing it. So I'm, I'm ready to vote on this out, but I just want the report to reflect that on larger properties, uh, some, uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, and that would help inform the public and that the public could be part of that, you know, with, when you say form a committee. So, so I'm, I thank you for volunteering that wording, Athena. And I see Paul's picture is here, but it's the town manager would high, be highly likely. So I'd like that wording to be in. So thank you. Hey, Bernie. Yeah, this is all a package and this will get assembled um, and brought to the council. So I would think if there is a large or significant piece of property that with this proposal coming to the council where the manager has not um, provided an adequate analysis of uh, an adequate input, um, that the manager would find this being handed back to him or her with instructions to do a better job. So <laughs> I'm not sure that we need to add anything anywhere. Right. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it, you know, a misplaced comment here and there, and I understand misplaced comments can be important, mm -hmm. um, but I'm neither an attorney nor a grammarian. Um, so uh, uh, I would just like to move forward with this without further ado. And Bernie, just so you know, I wasn't proposing adding the sentence to this. I was just saying in our report, capturing some of this discussion, but I'm fine with it as worded with the typos fixed and the long sentence broken up into two. Dave? Yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, I'm, I'm probably just from a staff standpoint, and a lot of this I think would fall to myself and my staff. I'm, I'm very comfortable with number six being in there. I think it's, I agree with Kathy. I agree with, with other comments today that I, I think it would be important to have that in there and and it really supports nine and ten in the in the overall policy. So I don't think it's onerous to do that work. Um I did, Kathy, I just wanted to maybe push back a little bit to say um I certainly would not characterize the town or town staff um kind of sitting on on Hickory Ridge. To me that's <laughs> a little bit of a mischaracterization there. Um, we certainly are very active on Hickory Ridge. I think I'm giving a presentation to the council in two or three meetings on that, but um, we haven't owned it for very long and there's a lot of moving parts down there and and we are looking at it still uh, in relation to uh, whether we need it for a South Amherst fire station or affordable housing or other municipal uses. So I just wanted to be a little careful with our characterization there, but we have many other properties. I mean, including the the former South Amherst School um, uh, down on the on the Common, uh, and some other other properties that um, you know we'll be looking at that that likely would would serve a municipal function um, in in one category or another. So thanks. I, I like the policy. Andy, I think it's time for a motion, and I move that the Finance Committee recommend to the Town Council adoption of the Town Council surplus real property disposition policy as presented. Is there a second? Change um, As amended? Yeah, I would, I would just say with the, the typos amended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As, as as amended uh, after the finance committee meeting of March fifth, twenty twenty four. Okay, so uh, there's a motion uh, and has been seconded. Uh, well, so let's vote. Uh, Kathy, start with yes. you. Yes. Bernie, concur. Andy, yes. Uh, this I'll vote yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Okay, so the vote is four uh, yes, one support, one 
uh, member absent and one uh, resident member absent. Um, so I think uh, that takes us through everything except topics not reasonably anticipated. And Andy, uh, you you did um, request to talk about uh, something, me, but like but Bernie, go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. I uh, uh, I don't know how many people saw the article that appeared a couple of weeks ago in the New York Times on rewilded golf courses. I sent a link over to David. Um, when you read through that and you look at all the work that's going on at Hickory Ridge, there's really been a remarkable event of work done on Hickory, Hickory Ridge. And yeah, I did. I think I, we, no, no, I, I just want to, because my thing has always been the town staff don't get enough uh, prompts or, or enough uh, uh, points for the work that they do. And so it's not just David, it's, it's the people who work for him and the people who work with him, uh, I think are doing some really, really good stuff. And um, the problem is it, it doesn't show up right away. <laughs> so, um, uh, you, you know, but there's a lot, and I know from my involvement with the Fort River group that there's just been a huge amount of work done and, and you know, great stuff being laid. So just to acknowledge that um, for those folks watching at home, yeah, stuff is happening. Andy, you wanted to talk about Yeah, this? I just want to briefly report on um, three different things that happened last week, all relating to the same subject, which is very much of interest to this committee, and concluded with a, um, a, a recommendation that members of this committee consider signing up for a webinar that the MMA has scheduled for, I believe, March 20th about Chapter 70. Um, as you know, Chapter 70 is the main source of uh, funding from the legislature to uh, local school districts, both uh, town school districts and regional school districts. And uh, it's a extraordinarily complex formula, always has been, and it has only gotten more complex since the Student Opportunity Act. But basically what goes on with it, and you would find out a lot more about this by attending the meeting uh, that the MMA is putting together. Uh, I know that uh, the MMA staff have worked hard in preparation and found somebody really good to conduct it. But um, what happens is that um, uh, the state um, uh, DESE uh, element, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education forms, um, calculates what's known as a foundation budget, which is the basic budget that all schools are expected to have. And um, then the foundation budget um, is used as a core piece of the calculation. Um, but first, starting with the foundation budget is problem one, that there are certain um, caps, the, uh, the certain categories of the costs that go into administering a school that um, have a cap to them um, and what the amount of inflation from year to year can be. And uh, the, in years when there's extraordinary inflation as there was a couple of years ago. Um, the uh, uh, inflation actually exceeds the inflation cap. So instead of using actual inflation, it uses the cap. And uh, the uh, there had been previously a provision that has been eliminated that allowed DESE to essentially do catch up with uh, those inflation costs um, in subsequent years. And uh, this was pointed out at the um, House Ways and Means hearing. Then what happens is that um, there is a calculate, uh, each community makes its decision on what its school budget is. And of course, most municipalities, if they can, will provide um, assistance that is above the foundation budget, that there's nothing that says that a community can't do that. 
with where the foundation budget plays in, that there's an assumption made that 82.5% of the um, foundation budget is assumed to be the local district's responsibility, the local community, or the regional district, and that the uh, amount of the uh, calculation of chapter 70 is then 12.5% because is the amount that's uh, um, above that 87.5%. And uh, then there's a third factor that has come into play since the Student Opportunity Act, uh, which is the, um, that um, because of trying to uh, fund the schools with the largest uh, gaps that um, other other districts um, have that have, have a have a limit of thirty dollars per student, which is particularly onerous on districts with falling enrollments, uh, but is really inadequate to fund all districts. So you've got that additional factor that comes into play because of the Student Opportunity Act and the number of districts that come in that are rated as minimum aid communities has actually been increasing, not decreasing. So you get all of these complicated factors running together. Um, the discussion that has been taking place a little bit with uh, various uh, uh, people who are, I would term, um, our friends in the legislature who are thinking about this from the Western Massachusetts perspective and for falling enrollment is a larger factor. And we discussed at the last uh, MMA Financial Policy Committee meeting and was discussed at the breakfast um, that was held uh, in Greenfield last week was that um, the best resolution to um, solving at least that last portion of the problem is to um, work on adjusting the um, differential, the cap that is placed, or, or the, the target figure, I guess it really is, that is uh, the amount of the foundation budget that is the local town's responsibility and that that is what needs to be re-examined. And I'm working on that within the Financial Policy Committee. Um, but um, I th think that uh, we should, um, at least as a Finance Committee, try and get as much of an understanding of this as possible. And uh, that uh, we should... Uh, consider at some point whether the council wants to suggest that we take a formal position um, on, on change. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that now. Uh, it's not going to be able to be implemented for um, the FY25 budget. I think it's running too far down the line already to make a difference, but it, it, it is something that we should be considering so that by the time they um, were a year from now, that there be a pretty strongly stated policy, which is what I'm hoping that I can get the MMA to consider. So I uh, I wanted to just report that to you a little bit to give you a flavor of what the issues are, both for the those of you who are planning to go uh, on Friday of this week to the legislative breakfast and might want to uh, see what you pick up there and to encourage you to attend the MMA uh, webinar uh, on March 20th, which I think Lynn has, has reminded everybody about. Uh, so that that's what my thoughts are, and I don't know if Paul has anything else to, to add on the subject or not, but anyway. That's my report. Thank you, Andy. Anyone else? Kathy? I have an unrelated 
comment since Andy brought this up. And it's just uh, to uh, suggest um, I'm willing to work on this. Uh, when we, one of the things that undermines our schools um, in terms of their budget is the way the charter formula is set for the schools. And last year we got a summary and it's a net outflow of over $3.3 million. So we're not talking about small amounts of money. So a change, in, and that's for 167 students in the two school systems, elementary and uh, regional. I think we at the council, and maybe if someone else wants to work with me, uh, should put together a analysis of this with a strong suggestion of ways to change it. Um, and and that would require a legislative change. It's it's particularly hurts Amherst because of the high proportion of special needs kids, and we've got declining enrollment. You know, so that we, when we lose a kid, we don't lose twenty three thousand dollars worth of expenses, but we send that out. And I, when we send a child to another public school, if someone goes to Belchertown or Pal, we send five thousand dollars. So the contrast is pretty stark. So I just think something short, and I'm willing to take a lead on it. There's a person from another town, um, and I know this isn't a this year change, but it would make an enormous difference. And it's been something behind the scenes that's been an eroding factor for quite some time. So it, that's a comment rather than a what to do about it. Andy? Yeah, I thank you, Kathy, for uh, bringing up the charter school formula. Uh, uh, we should talk about it again. I don't know if Leverett was the town you're referring to, um, then I think I know who we're talking about. Uh, but, I just but, I'm willing to put in some extra time on it. It's not it should it would normally come from the schools, but I don't think there's the bandwidth over there to, to do this. And I've identified where all the information is. So I was just going to try to take a stab at it and then whether it comes through finance or just goes directly to the council as something we want to be on record for was my, where I thought this could go, not just an op-ed piece somewhere. Yeah, let me know because uh, if there's anything that I should add to the uh, financial policy committee discussion at the MMA about it, because uh, I try and use the opportunity to flag issues that the committee should consider. Thanks. Yeah, the the other piece of this that I, I believe is true is that charter schools do not take special needs students uh, as in the same percentage that the public schools do. Mm -hmm. So that's another part that enters into it, I think. Right. And it's you know, and then that's the thing that's hard to tease out of the numbers because they may have a child, but they don't have the wheelchair bound for other things wrong with it, you know, be, because they, um, there's a program that they're running and they don't have the staff to support those children. Um, so it's, it's, it's a double whammy because we, our number is high because of the mix. They're not, it's not adjusted for the mix. Um, you know, it used to be, well, I won't say anymore. We used to mispay the Medicare Advantage plans because they took only low risk people and we gave them an average of everybody. They didn't take any 85 year olds. They didn't take anyone with sick. You know, so we were constantly overpaying them because well, we were using an average. Um, we, also, yeah, we also have the uh, the meme, if you will, we'll call it that, um, that uh, uh, folks who have uh special needs kids are are finding their way into the Amherst school system because of the quality of the services. I don't know if that's true. Um, I worked for 28 years with, with uh, folks with disabilities, cognitive disabilities, and I've seen all kinds of things happen in special ed programs and, and, and elsewhere. Um, we do have about, what, 21% of our student body has IEPs as opposed to about 19% statewide. So that translates into somewhere between a 10 and 15% difference, uh, which is significant. Uh, but the the uh, charter school issue um, has been and needs to be addressed because it's inherently unfair the way the money is taken out of the schools. 
Um, this is ostensibly to uh, get public schools to compete. And the charter schools were originally um, developed so that they could be models of learning that could then, uh, the, the, the new technologies and the new approaches could then be turned out, uh, handed down to the public schools. That hasn't happened. It hasn't, simply hasn't happened. Uh, it's just become a way to allow certain people a privilege to escape uh, uh, when they, they, they don't like or don't want to be part of the public education system. It's my humble opinion. Uh, so, so focusing on, on uh, focusing on the charter school formula, um, and the uh, uh, you know is is certainly a, an important thing to do. And I thank you, Kathy, for for raising that. And Andy, thank you for bringing it, uh, reminding the MMA that they, uh, if, as if they needed to. Uh, and that it's it's a, an important piece. Okay. Anyone else? All right, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, 3.15, the uh, Finance Committee is adjourned. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.